all my days I've been held in your head From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God and all my life you have been life we celebrate today. Yeah. Just a couple of weeks ago, Paulette and I were uh, in the home with uh, Lily and some of the Grahams. And uh, you know, she couldn't get about, but I heard no complaining. Uh, she said the Grahams help her and she's doing well. And I was shocked as probably anybody when we got the news a couple of days ago that Lily had gone to be with the Lord. And uh, so we celebrate this afternoon and we also are saddened this afternoon for you girls, for Bianca and Desiree and Celine, for you boys, for Joe and Chris and your families. 
You know, our hearts break for you. They, they really do. I, I just bleed inside when I think about the greatness that I believe Lily had about her. Uh, I'll never forget meeting uh, Joe and Lily. Uh, I came back to Tacoa in 2013 uh, to be the pastor at the time. And one of the first couples I met was Joe and Lily. They sat right there. And, uh, you know, Joe in his quiet demeanor, you could hear him coming in from outside. <laughs> Hallelujah! It's a good day. It's a wonderful day to serve the Lord. The music would start and Joe would worship and Lily would dance and just praise the Lord. Immediately we made a bond. Immediately we became friends. Immediately there was something that you knew about this couple that you were loved. I mean, it wasn't phony, it wasn't put on, it wasn't churchy. It was just pure, genuine love. A number of years ago, Joe went off. Uh, the military had sent him off, and uh, Lily had a friend that started taking her to church. It was a church of God. Joe comes home. <laughs> he wasn't real happy. Joe was really upset that Lily had gone to this tongue-talking, wound-up church. He goes back on deployment, and he tells Lily not to go back there. Well, Lily goes back the next week. <laughs> Joe comes home. Now Joe wants to go. You see, between his time of deployment and him coming back, the good Holy Ghost began to work on Joe. He came home and they just surrendered their lives to the Lord. They were good Catholics, but they were better Church of God. <laughs> they began to live it out. They were, there was nothing that would shame them from what they had gotten hold of. I always like to say the hounds of heaven got after them. I call them goodness and mercy. And they followed them till they nipped at their heels until they caught them. I am so honored from this family to be a part of this today. Your mom and dad just precious to me. I was listening last week to a friend of mine who's the president of ORU out in Oklahoma, and in his message, he said four things. I just put them in my mind, and I thought, I'm, I'm going to be using those. Uh, I, uh, I preach when I want to, and that's maybe once a year, and uh, so uh, I just don't preach much. I do it with my typewriter, or my computer, I guess. That's where I do most of my preaching, and I enjoy it. But the Lord said you'll be using this soon. And so I want to take your mind, your thoughts, this afternoon, just for a few moments, to Luke chapter 9 and verse 23. And he said to Lily, now I know this is Chipwood's translation, if you wish to follow me, as my disciple, you must deny yourself, that is, set aside selfish interest, and take up your cross daily, expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come and follow me, believing in me, conforming to my example in living, and if need be, suffering, or perhaps dying, because of faith in me. So what, what did that mean to Lillian? Well, I'm, I'm going to give you just four small things that I think it meant to Lillian. I think the first thing it meant was forgiveness. You have to forgive yourself, really, if you're going to serve the Lord uh, with all of your heart. And uh, there were some things that need to be forgiven. And then she started for giving other people. And Pastor Chad has been preaching one of the greatest series on the Lord's Prayer I've ever heard in my life. In fact, this probably is the greatest. And uh, I thought about it 
when Lily passed away, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses in the measure that we forgive others their trespasses and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen as we were talking to Lily a couple of weeks ago she was talking about challenges a little bit not much she wasn't complaining she was just saying you know you have to learn to forgive and when you forgive you don't hold it. You just press it out. Now, I can't forget. God didn't give me the capacity to forget. But when he gave me forgiveness in my life, I learned real quick what forgiveness was. It was not holding it against that person as if they had ever done it. I may remember it the rest of my life, but I hold no grudges. And Lily, you could just sense it. She just expressed that kind of love of forgiveness in her life. And then not only is taking up your cross daily a call to forgiveness, it's a call, it's a call to love. Uh, John 13, 35 said, By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love and unselfish concern for one another. How many of you felt the unselfish love of Lily in your life? Can you just, oh yeah, that's us, isn't it? I mean, to be around, she smelled like love. <laughs> she really did. You know, some people give off a fragrance that you don't want to be around very long. You understand what I'm saying? But not Lily. She gave off a fragrance of God's love. You, you see, it was Christ living in her. And it was living in such a way that it got pressed to the outside. That she would love with the love of the Lord. And then she was called to endure. Hebrews 13, 1 and 2. says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, that is, Joe, I know of one, who by faith have testified to the truth of God's absolute faithfulness, stripping off every unnecessary weight and the sin which so easily and cleverly entangles us. Let us run with endurance and active persistence the race that is set before us, looking away from all that would distract us and focusing our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of faith, that is the first incentive for our belief and the one who brings our faith to maturity, who for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him endured the cross, disregarding the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, revealing his deity, his authority, and the completion of his work. Not only was it a call to forgive, and a call to love, and a call to endure, but it was a call to die. Lily died, and yet she had never lived like she lived after she died. Isn't that amazing? Well, I want to tell you this. She has lived greatly the last number of years, but she's living more today than she's ever lived. I'm telling you, uh, that knee doesn't have to bother her anymore. Uh, the femur that they broke trying to straighten it out. It's well. Everything is well. Because you see, Lily died. And 1 Corinthians 15 and 31 through 33 says, And why do you think I keep risking my neck in this dangerous work? Paul is telling us a little. I look death in the face practically every day that I live. Do you think I'd do this? If I wasn't convinced of your resurrection and mine is guaranteed by the resurrected Messiah Jesus? Do you think I was just trying to act heroic 
when I fought the wild beasts at Ephesus, hoping it wouldn't be the end of me. Not on your life, baby. It's resurrection. It's resurrection. It's always resurrection that undergirds what I do and say and causes me to live the way I live. If there's no resurrection, we eat and we drink and the next day we die and that is all there is to it. So I'm telling you this afternoon, if you have not received resurrection Christ in your life, honey, you're going to die. You're guaranteed. But you're not going where Lily is. Just want to pass that along. If you want to see her again, you better die to yourself. Raise up to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Don't let yourselves be poisoned by this anti-resurrection loose talk. You see, bad company always ruins good manners. It always does. You see, God, by his providence, from eternity to eternity, he chose us, the elect. I don't know about you, but I'm one of the elect. I like it the way D.L. Moody said, you know, some people get hung up on the elect. D.L. Moody said, no need to get hung up on it. He said, God saves the elect, and then he elects some more. <laughs> I'm glad he elected more because I didn't come from a line that should have been elected. And most of you in this room didn't either. But we were because of God. He elected us in spite of our unworthiness, in spite of the treason and the rebellion that you and I have caused through the years. Jesus Christ chose to forgive us. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world. It's kind of like John 11 when he called Lazarus from the tomb and he said, Lucy, get him out of the grave clothes. That's exactly what happened to Lily when she came to know Christ. She got out of grave clothes and she started living and serving and worshiping. I'm glad he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace. Amen. 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 She fled temptation. She fled immorality. And she didn't leave a forwarding address for the devil to mail it to her. Does that mean she hadn't been tempted? Heavens no. But I'm going to tell you, before you and I can feel it, say it, know it, or do it, Christ gave us life. Oh, hallelujah. And then we were awakened to him. I think probably the greatest gift any of you could give Lily today is that she knew that you knew Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life. I've watched your grandmother. I'm not sure what you called Grandma Lily, but I've watched you girls and boys. I'm tell you, it's amazing. She she just never seemed to get agitated. She'd just well, I, you know, I wasn't around all the time. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> I wasn't around all the time, but she sure held it well when I was around. And the girls are laughing on the front row and saying amen. But I'll tell you this, she knew how to crack the whip and get them in line. And she was good at it. Uh, so that's what I saw. Father, I love you. I love you for this family. I love you, Lord, that they are my friends. But more than that, they're my brothers and they're my sisters. And I love you for the life of Lily Cologne. God, she made an impact on me and Paulette. We will never be quite the same because of her great impact on our lives. Now, Lord, would you show your grace and your strength this afternoon and in the days ahead to this wonderful family in Jesus' name.
Family and friends, man, just uh, what an honor it is to stand before you, especially before this life right here. It's just a humbling thing to speak anything over such a life well lived. But as Pastor Chitwood said, man, our hearts are hurting with you. And uh, somebody's going to have to take that spot right there and fill some big shoes uh, since we lost Joe almost a few years ago and now Precious Lily. But uh, I'm honored to stand before you. In Acts chapter 9, uh, this is what came to my mind. And just thinking about today, there's a lady named, uh, well, she has two names. Dorcas was one of the names. I think that was in the Greek. But then her other name was Tabitha. And in beginning in verse 36 in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek, her name is Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became sick and died, and her body was washed. And they placed it in the upper room and upstairs. Lydda was near Joppa, so when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent for him and told him to please come at once. So Peter went with him, and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room where Dorcas or Tabitha was. And he saw all the widows standing around. They were crying, and they were showing the robes and the other clothing that Dorcas, Dorcas had made while she was still with them. And I've just got to thinking since Thursday night, that's exactly the scene that's been going on. Since we lost a precious sister, a precious mom, or as the grandkids, it was Emma, is what the grandkids call her, I think is what they're saying. Uh, they lost this precious woman. This same scene has been happening uh, the way it did around Tabitha and Dorcas. They pulled out garments that she had made. They pulled out little things that reminded them of her, and they were re reminiscing of all the good times, reminiscing of all the memories and all that, they, uh, that she had made while she was with them. And to me, that's what I started filing through the memories of, of Lily. I don't have a whole lot, but Joe was uh, kind enough to send me a picture that I had forgotten about. It was out in the lobby. I think it was after a Christmas service, and there it's me and Joe, and I believe it was two of the grands with us. Just a beautiful lady. She was always, now I, I know y'all laughed when he said that she never got out of sorts, but she evidently was good in public about never getting out of sorts. Maybe that was what it was because the kids are always the kids. They don't care at church or what. They're just all over you. Uh, but she was always even killed and she always had the sweet voice and, hey, pastor, and she would do that and she would hug my neck and she always looked dressed to, so nice. Uh, that's what I remember of her. But from talking to some of them, there was another side of Lily that I never got to see. And I feel a little gypped, to be honest with you, because I think I would have appreciated the other side as much as the sweet as candy side. Because evidently she was a little bulldog underneath the sweet veneer. Uh, to the point that she didn't take nothing off nobody. Uh, especially some kids who tried to get in her grill. Uh, I don't know if it's a true story, but way back in the day when there was a daycare... Uh, some young man uh, made the mistake of getting in her face and uh, getting a little disrespectful, from which she responded by grabbing him by his shirt and picking him up off the floor and let him know who was boss. Um, I wanted to know that Lily. That's the Lily I wanted. Uh, not directed at me, of course. I just want her to still say, hey, pastor, but I want her to grab somebody else by the shirt. That's what I want. It's good to know that she had that in her. Uh, but for you guys, man, all the memories, all the things you have to be pulling out of the house and the pictures that we saw, uh, man, man, that, that's actually a healing thing. You know, you just relive the moments. And as they were pulling out the garments of Tabitha or Dorcas, y'all been pulling out these memories. And I've, I've heard just a few of them, you know, from all the grands and how it started with one calling her Emma. And it all picked up from there. And then there were trips to Disney and trips to Biltmore, the Biltmore house. And those pictures are all over the place out there. And if there's one thing that's true about Lily, there is no way anybody could argue that her family was numero uno of importance. Uh, that she loved her kids. And I know her kids. Not Y'all aren't always, you know, perfect. <laughs> I mean, I pastor three of you, but I, 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 I think even the ones I don't pastor aren't all perfect. Uh, but buddy, to her, you were everything. And uh, since Joe's passing, I might be, a, I think I'm right in this. I think there's been a, a unifying factor with all of you to where you've purposefully gotten together with some socials and some meals together. And I think that made Lily's last couple of years uh, as, as exciting and as delightful as there could be. I think it was Bianca said last night that she was the glue 
that held the family together. And I think that her uh, legacy should still be the glue that holds you together. Yeah. Just because the physical presence is gone doesn't mean the spiritual and the emotional uh, adhesion and cohesion that she brought needs to be lost. So I think us remembering these times with her and remembering the memories are absolutely in order and they are healthy. So just as those widows were pulling out those things, I, I think you know, need to continue doing that today, tomorrow, next week, calling each other and remembering because I think that's just a healthy part of this thing. Dorca's life was remembered by the garments. And there's a scripture in Revelation that says that our good deeds and works follow us. In other words, after we're gone, after we've left the room, after we've left the world, there's some of us still remaining. And I believe there's a lot to be said of what Lily has left behind. And she has left behind some of the most valuable things. I know when we start talking about what are we going to leave behind, a lot of people go straight to inheritance. Houses and cars and jewelry and guns and heirlooms. Those things are trinkets. Those things are minor. They're shiny and they're distractions to the main thing that we can leave behind. What I see that she left behind is a legacy. A legacy of faith. A legacy of love. Uh, showing us how it is to be patient with kids and grandkids. And showing us how to be faithful to a God. Through good times and bad. We saw Joe go from this situation to that, then he had the foot taken off, and one thing after another, it just got worse, and yet their faith was yeah. resilient, mm -hmm. and yet his, even his shout didn't quieten down in church. He was just as much a worshiper as he was before any of that happened, and after he was gone, she had every excuse to get slack, and she was just as faithful as ever, coming in this room, Acting like she liked everything I said, knowing good and well there's no way somebody likes everything I say. But she pretended real well, and she worshipped. And she showed you guys what it is to live for God and for family. And I'm just going to not pull any punches here and just tell you, kids, you don't have any excuse to go cold in your faith. And you don't have it. There's no wiggle room for you to be a lukewarm milk toast believer you had two parents that lived it out for you and lived it out for you loudly as pastor said Joe entered the room mouth first but what I appreciate about him he didn't quiet down when it was time to worship God he was loud with you out in the lobby just talking with you but when the songs hit he was loud for his Lord they showed you what it's like I didn't have the privilege of worshiping with my dad in the same room uh, I did every now and then, but he was in this church when he came back to the Lord. He was on fire for the Lord for the last 10 years of his life. He sat back in about the middle, back part, uh, middle part of this section right here. And when I was visiting, he remembered what it was to have the grace of God on his life. His hand would go up as high as he could reach it. And here's this rough looking, he looked like a Harley Davidson rider everywhere he went with a bandana on his head, tears streaming down his face. And every now and then I'll look back, and though he's never been in this room when I've pastored here, I remembered my dad's hand and I remember my dad's tears. I have no excuse to not give my best. And with the legacy of this woman and the legacy of your dad, I'll just be straight up with you. I'm going to get in your grill walking out of this place, and I'm going to ask you if you've got the victory, and I'm going to ask you if you're living right. I'm gonna, I might even get mean and say, would your mama be proud of you this week? I'm, I mean, I don't know what I might do. <laughs> Somebody's got to pick up the mantle. Somebody's got to pick up the garments left by not Tabitha, but by Lily. And not just remember how good she was, but to live out the legacy that she left behind. And to be the men and women that God has called you to be. Because you have everything it takes. Christ in you, the hope of glory, and the model lived out for you. Well, this day is not for the dead, it's for the living, unfortunately. Lily's not being any more blessed by what we're doing here. That, my goodness, Thursday night, guys, she is just, she's good. And if you try to bring her back, she might smack you in the face, just to be straight up honest with you. But this right here is for us. This is for us to cope, and it's for us to deal, and it's for us to say, all right, how now will I live? How, how, how am I going to deal with this? How am I going to move forward? Ecclesiastes, there's a scripture that says, it's better for us to be in the house of mourning than the house of feasting. In other words, it's better for us to be in a funeral than it is to be at a ball game or a tailgate or to be at a club, any of that. It's better for us to be right here. And here's why. Because destiny is the death for us all. Uh, is the, death is the destiny for us all. 
Everybody should take it to heart. Which means, it's a little morbid to think so, but unless the Lord comes back sooner, we're all going to be right here in a casket in front of a crowd one day. And that's a, man, that's a sad thought. Not really. Not when you understand what's really going on here. Uh, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. He's calling us home for the reason we were created. But there's a principle here. When I begin to look at my day, I don't want to have, to have somebody have to lie over me. Lie about me. Think of an hour before they can think of a good thing to say about me. That's sad. For my kid to have to come up and think of something I did when she was five. I'd rather it be easy, right? Amen. Stephen Covey says we need to begin with the end in mind, which means if I want this day of mine to be a day of glorious celebration, a day of worship, a day where my family speaks well of me and loves me just as much on my last day as they did, that means it's going to determine how I live my life now. Yes. And I think that's what we have to do right here and right now. Lily is remembered well because of how she lived, not because of anything I'm going to say, just because of how she lived. And here's what we have to do with it. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 says, We don't grieve like the rest of the world grieves. We don't grieve like people who have no hope. And I've been in a lot of these situations, and I, it is tangible. You can feel it. When a family doesn't know Christ, and when the deceased didn't know Christ... You, comp you contrast that with a family that knows Christ and they know the person that's gone on also knew Christ. There is a tangible, even visible difference. There is a despair. There is a desperation. There is phrases like, I can't make it. I'm not going to be able to live without them. I mean, all kind of hysteria in the funeral home. And your heart goes out to them too because they don't have the resource that God has offered them. A peace that passes all understanding. A comfort that comes not only from His embrace, but from the church's embrace. And a hope that this is not goodbye and this is not forever. The Apostle Paul said, I don't want you to grieve like those who have no hope. I want you to have peace. How do we have peace? Those who keep their mind on Him, the Scripture says, He will keep in perfect peace. How do we have comfort? 2 Corinthians chapter 1 says that we comfort one another with the comfort that God has given us. And what I witnessed in the emergency room on Thursday night is how it happens. The comfort that God has given other people in the body of Christ. He's given us that comfort so that we can embrace those who's going through what we went through a few years earlier. And we hug them. And there's a supernatural, there's a koanania, there's a sharing of the hurts and the fellowship. There's a healing of the embrace of those who've been comforted by God. And there was crying and there was wailing and there was hugs in that ER, but it was the body of Christ wrapping their arms around this beautiful family right here. That's how we're comforted. Friends who know Christ. And how do we have hope? Because we know better. We know this isn't it. And deep down, even though we're grieving and there's a void in our soul, we know that Lily Cologne is... She's good. No broken femurs, no weak knees, no frustration. Just joy unspeakable and full of glory. Well, if I can finish the story, I'll finish up with you guys. It didn't stop with them handing out Tabitha's garments. Peter came in the room and he saw all the commotion going on and he kicked everybody out of the room. He said, if you're crying, you're weeping, get out. Not because Peter did not understand the grief, but because Peter knew the Lord had other plans. So he kicked everybody out of the room, and Peter leaned over to the young lady's ear, and he said, Tabitha, get up. And at that, those words, she opened her eyes, and Peter picked her up by the hand, and the one who was once dead got on her feet, and Peter presented their loved one back to life again. What an amazing story. So what can I tell you that happened Thursday night? There was a point in the ER where there was nobody else in the room. The family was out. The, the, the EMTs, the nurses, they may have been working. But there came a point when Jesus entered the room. And he leaned over and he said, Lily, are you ready? You ready to get up? Get out of this frail body and put this tent to rest. And what we call Lily passed on, Jesus calls Lily passed over. 
And Lily got up. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the spirit in this place. Lily got up and she took her last breath here and she took her next breath in glory. And he presented her alive to Job and he presented her alive to loved ones who've gone on before. It was not a moment of death. The scripture says those who know Christ and believe on him will never taste death. They pass from one breath here to the next breath there. Their last heartbeat here, they take in the glory of heaven the next. He ushered her in. He said, Lily, get up. And she got up. That's what happened Thursday night. While we, I, 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 it feels wrong to say it, but while we were weeping in the ER waiting room, she was shouting on Glory Road, saying, thank you, Jesus, for bringing me out and taking me over. Hallelujah. Do you feel that hope right now? Which gives us reason to live out what Lily showed us to live out. I thought you were going to quote the quote I was going to end with when he started talking about D.L. Moody. And D.L. Moody said this, Someday you're going to read in the papers that D.L. Moody of East Northfield is dead. Don't you believe a word of it. At that moment I shall be more alive than I am now. I shall have gone up higher, that is all, out of this old clay tenement into a house that is immortal, a body that death cannot touch, that sin cannot taint, a body fashioned like unto his glorious body. Amen. Your mama, Emma, is just fine. And if I may speak by faith, you're going to be just fine. Yeah. You're going to make it. Desiree, you're going to make it. And you're going to remember Mama showed you how to make it through some tough times. Bianca and Chris, Swain, and there's another one where Des over here, Joe, I'm sorry, you got to sit with the family. I'm a squirrel, you know, right? going to be tough days. There's going to be tears. Every now and then around my mom's table, there'll still come a weird moment and somebody will start crying over Papa. It'll happen. But those are beautiful moments. Yeah. The Holy Spirit that lived in her, that lives in you, is going to see you through the days ahead. Because He is a good, good Father. Yes. Yes. Father, in Jesus' name, Abba, we come to you and we ask for your grace to be a little more felt. If we can ask that. We know we live by faith, not by sight. We live by faith, not by feelings. Lord, I just think sometimes you're good enough to let us feel your embrace. So if you could grant us that blessing today, somewhere between this moment, the graveside, and after the graveside, the sharing of food together, and between that, going to bed tonight, and the days ahead when we're, life goes back to normal, would you let grace embrace us like you never have before? We thank you for the victorious homegoing of our mama, of Emma, of our friend and our sister. Now give us the grace to live out a way that will make her proud and will make your name glorious. In Jesus' name.
Yeah.